Hi guys, today we are looking at sets in C++ and they are basically containers that you can use to store unique elements following a specific order. So let's jump to this hacker rank challenge here. It's a coding challenge in C++ and they are giving us uh, a couple of examples how you can uh, declare a set, check the size, um, you know, insert elements, erase elements and find elements. So I'm going to be showing you new uh, most of these operations in this challenge because I'm going to write the code from scratch. But basically, we're going to receive some user inputs like this. So you see the number eight here. This is because we have eight queries to work with. And there are two numbers on every line. So the first number corresponds to a query type. So for instance, if it is um, type one, let me scroll down exactly to that portion of the instructions. Okay, if it's type one, then uh, we have to add an element to the sets. If it's type two, then we have to delete that element. And if it's type three, then we have to um, check if the element is present in the sets. If it is, then we have to print yes on the screen. And if it's not, then we have to print no. So um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start coding now, is I want to add uh, the string header. I want to use string. We're going to be dealing with user inputs. And I also want to use the I string stream um, type, which is for input streams. You know, I think I, I talked about that in uh, previous videos. So I'm also adding this, the S stream header. And now the first thing I'm going to do inside the main function is to declare the sets. So I have this right here. I'm going to write set and I can do that because we already have that set header at the top here. So I'm going to say set. It's a set of integers like this, int, and I'm going to call that s. Next thing, I want an int, which is going to correspond to the input, and I want to get the input from the user here. So this corresponds to what you see um, here. This will be the number eight that we are gathering uh, or that we are accepting from the user. Next up, uh, we want to have a for loop i0, i is less than or equal to the inputs. And here I'm saying uh, less than or equal because the first line, actually when you run this program in uh, with the hacker rank compiler, the first line uh, between eight or the first line after eight is going to be an empty line. Uh, it's not exactly what you see here. So we need to run that loop one more time. So that's why to, uh, you know, uh, cater for that situation, I have to say less than or equal to. Next up, uh, I'm going to enter the for loop and I want to have a string. I'm going to call that string query inputs that is going to correspond to what you see on every line. And now I'm going to have two integers uh, in which I'm going to store each of these number on every line as I run through the loop. So the first um, int variable, I want to call it uh, query type. The second one, I'm going to call it uh, query number. And now I want to get the inputs for these two different numbers here as every line. So I want to use get line. We talked about get line in a previous video. And I want to store that inside query inputs. So the query inputs at every iteration will correspond to the contents of each line. Now, uh, I need to check, uh, first of all, if we actually have input, because like I said, when you run the hacker rank compiler, after eight, it's gonna be an empty line. So I want to say if the query inputs, oops, sorry, it's query input like this, if the size is greater than one, like there's actually contents, then I want to have I string stream, I'm gonna call that SS, and I'm going to pass it the query inputs. So now this input string stream is going to have the content of query inputs and I can uh, now uh, fill the, um, or rather add values to these two int right here. So I can say SS like this, retype. So the first word or the first number in this, in this string will be added to query type and the second one will be added to query number. So um, now I'm going to create a switch statement because we now have to 
deal with these conditions right here. Uh, where are they? Yeah, these ones right here. Okay. So depending on what the uh, query type is, there are three things we can do. If it's one, I'm not sure I've talked about um, uh, switch statements in the past, but um, I'm going to use it here. It's kind of like a, a substitute for if else statement, but I don't want to have a bunch of if else, you know, nested and so on. I think switch cases are more, um, they're more tidy for my purpose here. So case one, I'm going to insert a query number okay, inside the sets. Then I need to add break statement so that it doesn't run the rest of, uh, you know, that condition if uh, the query type is one. If it's two, then we have to delete the element. So I'm going to say s dot erase query number. So this is going to erase that query number from the sets. We add break again, and then I have to say if it's three, then in this case um, I want to get an iterator like this int. I'm going to call that it. And I'm going to say it's equal to s that finds the query number. Now this line is going to return s dot end. Okay, it will return s dot end if the element wasn't found. It was not found. Okay. So um, if it's, we, we have to check, did we actually find the elements? And for that, I can simply say if it is equal to s dot n, meaning that the element was not found, I can say uh, c out no. If it was found, okay, I can say else. I think we have solved this challenge here. Let's be sure of it because we never know really. I'm going to run the code anyway because I don't really have patience right now. It's past midnight already. So yeah, we passed the tests. Okay, this is exactly the output uh, we were supposed to get because uh, we added 9, 6, 10, and 4 to the set. Then we checked if uh, six is in the set, which of course it is. So we printed yes. Then after that, we checked if 14 was in the set. It was not, so we output no here. And then we deleted six from the set. And then we checked again if six was in the set, which of course it wasn't. That's why we printed no. So now let's run um, the full code. Like let's submit it and make sure that we pass all the test cases. And we just did, okay? There were actually 26 test cases which we passed. So that's it for this challenge. I hope you get an idea of how sets work. If you don't, then I'm going to add this link in the description of this video. Please make sure you like, you subscribe, you turn on your notifications because I'm going to be publishing way more videos in the future. And uh, I'll catch you next time, bye.